The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. Well, howdy everybody, welcome to the show into the northeast corner of Texas, where we're just outside a little town of Texarkana at one of the most forward-thinking deer breeding operations in the country. White-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal. And white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and inform you of how deer farmers all over the country are now using rapidly developing science-based research on their captive deer herds to solve the chronic wasting disease issue through selective breeding. Not only is this new science working, but it's obvious that captive deer breeding is the only way to help save America's deer herds from CWD, which will help improve overall herd health and at the same time can produce more quality trophy sized animals for the general public. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the modern day deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. This is CC Bar Whitetails, and on today's show, we'll show you some of the most genetically durable whitetail deer to chronic wasting disease in the country. And we'll tell you how the owners of this deer breeding operation, Hank and Shauna Corvell, are successfully implementing a specific genetic whitetail breeding strategy that has risen them to one of the most well-known and well-respected deer breeders in the country. By using this new breeding strategy, they've just come off their most profitable year ever as a deer breeder. But first, we need to address some very important issues, and it all has to do with chronic wasting disease, otherwise known as CWD, and how CWD is being used as a mechanism to abolish deer breeding operations. It's no secret that the deer breeding industry is under attack by those that would love to see deer breeders go the way of the dinosaur. These groups are well-funded and they have one goal. Their goal is to kill deer breeding and it's now shockingly obvious there are even state agencies working to put deer breeders out of business. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is actually advertising that CWD is a deer disease that people need to learn more about. Fair enough. Now these advertisements are in Parks and Wildlife's own words to make the general public more aware of the seriousness of CWD and encourage them to learn more about the facts. What do you think this message sends to the general public? Is it positive for deer hunting or is it negative? The message is that CWD must be everywhere and it's proving to be detrimental to participation in hunting. If deer have this horrible disease, why would anyone want to even risk hunting them or certainly eating them? when in fact CWD is not everywhere and it's never killed off a deer herd in the wild and no human has ever gotten CWD, ever. But what has killed off thousands of deer in the Texas Deer Breeding Program is Texas Parks and Wildlife looking for chronic wasting disease. So to illustrate my point, I want to compare COVID to CWD. Both are diseases. Science has proven there are some people that are more durable more resistant to COVID than others. For example, if you had 10 people in a room at one time, all exposed to COVID, the same time, same duration, the same way, there's gonna be seven of those 10 people that come down with COVID, mm, seven. And then there's gonna be two people that have slight symptoms and one person doesn't get it at all. Why is that? It's because one person was genetically durable, more durable than all the other people. It's exactly the same way with CWD and deer. Deer, like humans, are genetically prone to be either more or less susceptible to all kinds of diseases, including CWD. We know this. Science has proven this. And what's so incredibly exciting to the deer enthusiasts out there is that in the deer breeding world, with every breeding cycle, 
we are selectively breeding out less genetically durable deer and making a healthier deer herd that is proving to be less susceptible to CWD. How is this being done? It's being done through science. And thanks to efforts by Dr. Christopher Seabury and the North American Deer Registry, there's a scientific path to breed away the deer that are susceptible to CWD. There's simply not enough time in this show to cover it all, but there's a lot of exciting information. I encourage you to head on over to our YouTube channel where we've got a video called The Ox Ranch Story. And it's fascinating if you're interested in finding out what is going on with chronic wasting disease and how deer breeders are working to solve the problem. After the break, we'll show you how this new breeding strategy is proving successful at CC Bar Whitetails. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and Facebook. So early in the show, we mentioned going to the Deer Farming Channel, check out the Ox Ranch Genetics video. And the reason why is because it tells you what Hank is doing right here. The goal here is to breed for S markers. And that's exactly what Hank is doing. Tell him you're gonna make some tough decisions, aren't you? Because it's either you're in or you're out. You're not gonna be able to change your mind. Once you decide to go this way, it is a hard decision to make, but it will be proven to be very successful. Tell him what we're talking about. You know, we've been doing it this is, I think, five years. You're going to look out there and you're going to see these GS bucks that are maybe the best buck you've raised since. Or you... GGs. A lot, most deer are GGs. You're going to see GGs and GS bucks, and they're going to be big. Could be the biggest buck you ever raised, and tell them what you need to do with it. You got to mark them all. I mean, you're going to have to get, if, if you're going to breed resistance, then you're going to have to make up your mind, and you just got to stick with it. And so ultimately, take a look at Hank's deer, and he's been doing this, like he said, five years. Now he's been breeding how many years? Uh, we started in 2004. So you, he's been breeding a long time, but not until five years ago did he really start breeding for genetic resistant. And so now doing this has raised him to be one of the top breeders in the country. Everybody in the country knows about his herd because he's so far ahead of everybody because he has made those critical decisions and let some giant deer go. We can take a look at that buck right there. And he's absolutely incredible. I mean, the five years ago, would you have used him for a breeder? Maybe that one, but you know, yeah, he's pretty nice. But, I mean, he, but now, yes, they have to have the SS. They've got to have a good GBV and, or they don't have a chance to breed here. Right. And so what's happened, you have video of letting these gigantic two-year-olds out. Explain to people what happens to these deer. We raise deer here at the CC bar to be released, liberated out in the release sites, and they go out and they do their job and spread their genetics to the deer that's already there. And ultimately what, what we've got, we basically have three different categories of deer. You got GGs, GSs, and SSs. What we're trying to do this way is go all SSs. And in order to do that, you got to take a GG and you need to breed it to an SS or at least a GS. So hopefully you can get that S marker in there in the offspring. And so by releasing these giant two-year-olds, and he's, these are stalker deer. You can buy these deer and put them on your property. More than likely your property has got GGs. But when you put a GS out there, you're introducing that S marker into your herd, making it more genetically durable. And so as we do this, I mean, tell everybody about how popular you become. <laughs> I don't know, he won't do it. I'm telling you, he won't do it, but I'll tell you. I mean, he goes to a deer sale now and everybody in the building wants to talk to him because I mean, you're humble as can be, but you've got the most genetically durable deer because you've done this for five years, okay? But you have been breeding SSs with great breeding values and you've been producing a lot of SSs. And I really think that where this is going is I think that these people with these release sites are gonna ultimately maybe five or 10 years from now, they're gonna want nothing but SS deer on their sites. What do you think? Absolutely. Without a question. They're so, already, I think everybody that I delivered to deer to this year wanted to know where they get in the S markers. Exactly, and so And I did attention. not expect that. It, it, yes, I expected it because people are smart, people pay attention. You want the S markers, and the easiest way to get S markers is go to somebody like Hank that's got the S marker, but he's not braiding them because he's got better stuff. He's just one rung up the ladder. Okay, so they're great deer, but if somebody wants more information, give them your number. Uh, it's 
0591. And they're up in the far northeast corner of Texas and come here, you're not gonna meet better people or you'll see any better genetically superior deer. And when we get back from the break, we're gonna show you some SS yearlings that uh, they've been genetically programmed to be a whole lot more resistant than the generation before. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, L.E. Fence, the Texas Deer Association, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. So an operation this size, there's no way that you can do it by yourself. No so way. tell everybody who helps you. No, you know, I've got my family, my wife and both of my daughters, and I've got two pretty good son-in-laws, Keith. I hope they don't see that part, but they're pretty good son-in-law. <laughs> and then I've got uh, Alonso mm -hmm. Rosas that has been with me for, I think, 14 years now. Wow. And see, that's the CC Bark team. That is the team. Okay, and so when you come out here, you're going to see Sean or Andrea, you, Alonzo, you, you're going to see the entire CC Bar team. And this is a full-time deal, isn't it? Well, in 2011, I stopped doing the, the nursing and came and started full-time on the farm with Hank. This has been such a blessing to me. I like the unity that it brings because our whole family does it. And so Hank and I and Andrea are usually during the day and then our youngest daughter will come in a lot of times after work and you know if we're working deer through the barn or something like that well she'll come in and help us with that. Hank and I usually go out early in the morning. We drive through all the pens, we check everything, make sure all the health is good. That usually takes us, I don't know, anywhere from two to three hours. Then we'll go in during the heat of the day and then back out in the evening and do the same thing. Run through the pens, make sure everything looks good. There's nothing that needs doctoring. And then of course we'll help Alonzo with the feeding. There's always fences to be repaired or <laughs> troughs to be cleaned. There's always something to do. Taking care of the fawns and bottle feeding has been the one thing that I think I enjoy the most in the deer business. And I've done the longest since I was about 10 years old, doing it on my own. And I think I thrive with animals and just being outdoors and working somewhere where it's part of life. The cool thing about deer farming is it's a way of life for us all. We get to live out in the country, we get to live around deer. We get to make money doing this. I think, how cool is that? And, and that's the reason why it upsets every deer breeder to realize that we're being targeted about this disease, that literally, we're the solution. We are not the problem, we're the solution. Because it, captive deer breeding is the only place that we can genetically build a durable deer to chronic wasting disease. And so with that being said, you've had some deer through the years that have helped get you here. And now they're older guys. I mean, you had Silver Star, I mean, he was, he was a great deer. Still alive, still produces great. but you've got better offspring than him. And so now, you know, we're in a pen with one-year-olds. Tell everybody about these one-year-olds. They're by far the best group of one-year-olds that we've ever raised. And uh, what we're talking about is genetically, as far as being CWD resistant, okay? These are the best ones. And they are the best at what they got on their heads too, Keith. They, they, Silver Star has done a tremendous job for I us. I mean, so they're all SS's. I'm Every assuming. buck in this pen is an SS. And they're all yearlings? All yearlings. Okay, what about that one right there? He's just beautiful. Tell me about him. He just got selected. He was, uh, I sold the uh, choice lot in the Texas Top 30. Yeah. And uh, Brad Hassig with Prime Acres and Chris Ezel with Freedom Whitetails. They purchased the, uh, the lot and they just made their selection this morning on that buck right there. You've seen Brad at Prime Acres on our show. You've seen Chris Ezel on our show. And they were wise enough to be able to look at that deer. They came out here and looked at all these yearlings, right? So they basically pick pick of the litter. They got That's pick of the litter. That's okay. what they purchased. And so what happens, they get to come out here and they know the, the breeding value of these deer. They get to see them after they've grown out. 
And out of all these one-year-olds, which one do you like the best? I mean, it'd be hard not to pick that deer right there. So I can guarantee you, Brad and Chris, both of them are gonna breed them hard and so are you, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, th that deer right there, see, it's there's a lot of people in the deer breeding industry right now, and they're showing some older deer, four-year-old, five-year-olds, that have got decent breeding values and they're SSs. But the deal about it is, what, you, what I think everybody's looking for is that young deer that's got SS markers and it has a low breeding value. So that deer right there has got it going on. What is his name? We're gonna name him SOS. 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 That ought to be pretty easy to remember. He's coming to the rescue for the deer industry. I mean, that guy stands out above everybody else, but these other guys are exceptional. Who are they out of and talk about them. Keith, so far, all the picks have all been out of Silver Star. Why are you, you, you are so modest. I mean, I'm telling you, that's the way Hank is. I mean, he just, he undersells and he over delivers every time. Silver Star has gotten it done for CC Bar. Okay. Absolutely. And he'll get it done for you. And you got semen on him, don't you? Well, we've got semen on him. We're running low now, but we're fixing to stock it back up. Yeah, so I mean, you, you can give him a call and get some, but Silver Star, look at his production. So these big guys are out of Silver Star. Every one of them. Really? Yes, sir. And you got pedigrees from North American Deer Registry to back it all up. Absolutely. And on those pedigrees, you wind up having the GEBV scores and all. Absolutely. Okay, I'll tell you, if you're a deer breeder and you're not using GEBVs, you're missing the boat. What do you think? I think so. I mean, the way the industry is going, is going towards just genetic breeding. And uh, and if you don't use the North American Deer Registry to be able to determine the breeding values and the codons on these deer, you literally are, you're missing the boat. Hank, if somebody wants more information about CC Bar Whitetails, they want to come out here and visit, I, I tell people I think around the middle of August would be about the best time to come. Wouldn't yeah. you? Yes, sir. I mean, that, that's the time it is right now. And so you can come on out here and uh, he'd love to have you. They're fantastic people just outside of Texarkana. Give them a phone number they can call and just schedule an appointment to come on out. Give me a call, 903-277-0591. And I'm gonna tell you something. If you wait till August to come out here and try to make a deal, you're waiting too long. What you need to do when you see the show, it could be January, it could be March, it doesn't matter. Call Hank because the reason why is because everybody in the country wants these genetics because they are years ahead of the competition because they have been working for five years now. And as you can see, these deer are genetically superior. Life Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, CC Bar Whitetails, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. Now for some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. Hey guys, this is Ron with LE Fence, out here to job with some particularly difficult terrain. Uh, right now we're looking at about a 200 foot, almost straight down drop of fence line that we had to put in. A lot of people would try to find a way to get around this, but we're gonna go ahead and do the right job, even if it's the hard way. We gotta do it all by hand. So really you gotta have the right equipment, right tools to get down this hill. Uh, start at the top, work your way down. Um, gotta have a lot of air hose and uh, big air compressor. You can push some power through your pneumatic hammers and your rotary rock drills basically to do all the work by hand. Getting the wire down is the next daunting task. You gotta tie it at the top and just let it roll down. Uh, 400 pounds of wire trying to hand roll down this hill is not going to happen. So just let it go down and then work at it from the bottom and pull it tight. Then you can start making your little adjustments. But uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. But if you got any questions, give me a call. Number, information is at the bottom of the screen. Look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks. So we saw Silver Star's production. Tell them about some other bucks you have out here that are also great markers and get it done. Well, we've got Whetstone. He's a good option for me because I've got a lot of Silver Star daughters. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's out of a book I had called Sandstone, mm -hmm. SS. Born here. Everything is born here. Okay. Every deer we have here is born here. Mm -hmm. He's a negative two SS. And uh, then we have Silver Spur. There's a good young two-year-old buck that's a son of Silver Star that I can go back on my sandstone and all the other, you know, other other genetics and crosses that we have. I, I want to tell you something. I, I want you to know that there have been deer breeders that have been growing these pedigrees for 20 plus years and they've had unbelievable deep wide pedigrees with some big name deer, but the genetic breeding values weren't there, the codons weren't there. And so what we're experiencing now in the deer farming industry is it's a reset. 
It really and truly is, is a labor. reset. Yes. Where the guys that were on top are sitting here just shaking their heads. They can't believe we've got this invisible trait to be able to now determine the quality genetically of your deer. And they're realizing that their deer, although they may have every other trait in the world, they're not genetically durable as a SS marker deer. So it is a reset in the marketplace. Would you agree? Yes, sir. I mean, it's something a lot of people don't want to talk about, but I'll talk about it because you need to know about that. All right, so as you're looking at all these big bucks and they, with great genetics, uh, the thing about it is they've also got these does and the, the does, you can't grow a big deer herd without big doe genetics. And your does, you've got so many great does. And so if somebody wanted to start taking advantage of your last five years of hard work, they could do so real easily by just buying these SS marker does, couldn't they? Yes, we've had a couple of uh, young deer breeders that's coming in that that's exactly what they did. I want to also point something out too, and then and listen up. If you're a deer breeder, Hank probably isn't going to sell you deer, okay? He makes deals with people that are going to be new deer breeders, and if he can make a deal with you for a satellite farm, basically. But and there, there are conditions with that. You need to call him and find out. But he doesn't sell deer to deer breeders for there's obvious reasons. You can call him and find out. But what he does, these deer are going to release sites. So those genetics go out on these release sites to help people create more genetically durable deer. That's right. Folks, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you. You can head on over to the Deer Farming Channel see this program in its entirety. We had to cut a lot of it out because we just don't have time to share this important information. But we appreciate y'all's time watching. We want you to head on over, watch the elongated version, and get active. Become an activist and support deer farming. I'm Keith Warren with Hank Corbell, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, buddy. I thank appreciate you, you. Thank you. Okay, so you've got property, and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.